This video will explain how the symmetric group of a square acts on the square. This is taken from John Fairline's example. First, let's recall what is the symmetry group of a square. The symmetry group of a square usually denoted by D4. It consists of four rotation about the center of the square and four reflections. Before we talk about the symmetry of the square, let's look at the square I have drawn here. I have labeled four corner one, two, three, four. Notice that this label one, two, three, four are fixed. The rotation are rho zero, which is an identity map which is a rotation of zero degree about the center of the square. You have mapped one to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. The next symmetry is row one, which is 90 degree rotation anti-clockwise about the origin. When row one applied to the square, the vertex located at, at location one will move to location 2. The vertex at location 2 will move to location 3. The vertex at location 3 will move to location 4. And vertex from location 4 will move to location 1. Similarly, row 2 will be a rotation anticlockwise about the center of the square 180 degree. The vertex at 1 will move to location 3. The vertex at 2 will move to location 4, and so on. Whereas, row 3, which will be a rotation about the center of the square, 270 degree, and the vertex at location 1 will move to lo location 4, and the vertex at location 4 will move to location 3, and the vertex at location 3 will move to location 2. And the vertex at location 2 will move to location 1. Beside rotation, there are also reflections. There are four reflections. Mu 1, which will be a vertical reflection in the line by set the square. And mu 2 will be a reflection in a horizontal line bisect the square. So this reflection is mu2. You'll see that vertex at location 1 will move to location 4 and vertex at location 2 will move to location 3 and so on. And delta 1 will be a reflection in the diagonal joining 2 and 4 such that 2 and 4 will stay put after the reflection, but 1 and 3 will interchange position. That is delta 1, and delta 2 will be a reflection in a line joining 1 and 3, so that under this reflection, 1 and 3 will remain fixed, where 2 and 4 will interchange position. These are the eight symmetry of the square. Now let's look at the set X now. Now this X contains four corner, one, two, three, four, and four sides, S1, S2, S3, S4, and two diagonal D1 and D2. This is actually a simplified version from the text. The text has much more things on the square. But I collect these few things from the square and call it the set X. And I'm going to use a symmetry group of the square, D4, X on this set X now. So let's examine how the group X on of this set X here. Now the X consists of 1, 2, 3, 4. 
I pick the element row 2. Now row 2, if you remember, let's try to look at row 2. Now row 2 is a rotation of our center of the square, 180 degree. So let's look at how row 2 acts on the vertex 1, 2, 3, 4. So remember, row 2 is rotation about center of the square, 180 degree. Now, I have colored the four corner with purple, orange, red, and blue so that I can see better what the group action has done to this four corner 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to write down the group action here. How does row 2 act on 1? Remember, row 2 is a rotation of 180 degrees about center. So what happened to the corner at 1 when you rotate 180 degrees about the center? Now the vertex at location 1, after rotation of 180 degrees about center, will move to location 3. So the purple vertex are moved to location 3. So when row 2 x on 1 becomes 3. How about when row 2 x on 2? Now 2 is the orange vertex located at 2. So after rotation of our center 180 degree, the orange vertex will move to location 4. So Whatever vertex at location 2, we move to location 4. How about when row 2 acts on the vertex 3? Remember, row 2 is a rotation of 180 degrees about center. So the red vertex at location 3, after rotation of 180 degrees, it will move to location 1. So the vertex at location 3 will move to location 1. How about row 2 x on 4? The vertex at location 4, which is a blue vertex now, will move to location 2 after you rotate 180 degree about the center. So 4 after the action by row 2 will move to 2. This is how row 2 x on the vertex 1, 2, 3, 4. Then, how about how row 2 x on the side x1, x2, x3, x4? Now, I purposely use four different color to help you see what happened when I apply row 2, which is 180 degree rotation about the center. So, let's try to find out what happened when row 2 apply x on x1. When row 2 adds on x1, that's what happened to be a color orange here. After rotation of 180 degrees about the center, then it will move to here, label S3. So S1 will move to S3. How about when row 2 adds on S2? When row 2 is a 180 degree rotation of our center. So after rotation, the red bar located at S2 will move to here, which is occupied on S4. So the, the side located at S2 will move to the side located at S4. So I'll write row 2 and S2 will give you S4. How about when row 2 add on S3. Now S3 is the side label blue now. So when you rotate about our center 180 degree to the blue side, we we'll move to here which is location S1. So you can write row to add on S3 will give you S1. And then finally when row to Add on S4, the purple line now is located at S4. When you apply row 2, which is a rotation of 180 degree about our center, then purple line S4 will move to here, which is the location of S2. So S4 will 
move to S2. All these labels are actually fixed at the background. So you see this 1, 2, 3, 4, S1, S2, S3, S4 are not moving. However, you see the color changing, indicating what happened when you apply row 2. Similarly, in the earlier picture, what you see is what happened when you apply row 2. Notice that the label 1, 2, 3, 4, S1, S2, S3, S4 are not changing. Now let's look at what happened when row 2, which is a rotation of 180 degree, applied to the diagonal D1 and D2. Label there. I notice that this D1 and D2 are labeled only. So let's try to figure out what happened when row 2 add on D1. Row 2 is rotation of 180 degree about the center. So after you rotate 180 degree about the center, you find that D1 will still go back to D1. So still here. After rotation, D1 is still at D1. So row 2 add on D1 will give you a D1. How about when row 2 add on D2? After rotation of 180 degree about the center, the red line still stay at the same location at D2. So that means when row 2 add on D2, get back D2. So we understand how row 2, the rotation of 180 degree about the center, adds on the set X so consists of four vertices, four sides, and two diagonal. Now let's investigate the action of mu2 on the set X number. Mu2 is a reflection in a horizontal line bisecting the square. So mu2 is a reflection about here. And we still remember the Label 1, 2, 3, 4, S1, S2, S3, S4 are fixed at the background. Let's look at how mu2 act on 1. As mu2 is a reflection in the horizontal line by setting the square, the vertex at location 1 after reflection will move to location 4. So the purple vertex will move from 1 to 4. So mu2 x1 give 4. Now let's look at how mu2 act on 2. We find that the vertex of location 2, which is orange now, after the reflection in the line by setting the square, will move to vertex at location 3. So 2 will move to 3 after applying mu2. And when mu2 acts on 3, since mu2 is a reflection in the horizontal line by setting the square. So the vertex at 3 after the reflection will move to 2. So 3 will move to 2 after we apply a reflection. And when mu2 add on the vertex 4, you find that the blue vertex can move to location 1. So Vertex at location 4 will move to location 1. And this is how mu2 act on the vertices 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, let's look at how mu2 acts on the four sizes. The sizes are S1, S2, S3, S4. All these S1, S2, S4 are just labeled on the background. We are going to investigate how mu2 act on these four sides. So let's say when mu2 act on S1, the Orange line at S1 will move to S3. So S1 after reflection will move to S3. Let's look at how mu2 add on S2. Remember, mu2 is a horizontal reflection about a line by setting the square. So under this reflection, and S2 will actually stay put at S2. Mu2 add on S2 will give you S2. How about when mu2 and on s3? The side located at s3 
which is the blue side now, after reflection, we'll move down to a location labeled as 1. So mu2 add on s3 will give you s1. And how about when mu2 add s4? Since we'll do a horizontal reflection, you'll find that the side at s4 will stay at s4. So we can write mu2 add on s4 to give you back s4. And let's look at how mu2 apply to the diagonal. So when I apply mu2 to the diagonal, so mu2 add on d1, the diagonal located at d1. Since we are doing a horizontal reflection, then you will find that this blue diagonal after reflection will move to here. This is a location of d2. And mu2 add on d1 give you d2. How about when mu2 add on d2? Now d2 happen to be color red here. After reflection, the horizontal line will move to here. And this is the location label d1. So we are to add on D2 give you D1. I must stress again, all these color links are artificial. The square should not have any color link. This color link is for you to visualize what happened when I apply the symmetry to the vertices, to the size, to the diagonal. I have shown you a simplified version of where x consists of four vertices and four sizes and two diagonal of a square. I hope you can continue to check the textbook and explore for yourself how the other element of a group act on this square.